All right, hey juniors, my name is Mark Osborne. I am here talking with you guys today because a, a group of seniors requested that I be here. Um, I came to your school back in September and I spoke with a group of seniors. Um, I was in mainly to talk about legacies and so the first senior class and they liked what I said and that first talk kind of evolved into what's gonna be presented to you today. Um, <clears throat> A little bit more about myself, I am a middle school teacher. I work with grades 6th, 7th, and 8th grade on the east side of the state. Um, I'm friends with, college friends with uh, Miss Cooney here in the building. She, uh, she and I hung out a lot in college, so that's the connection. Uh, a little bit more about myself, I am a big nerd. I love Star Wars, comic books, movies. I read lots of books. I coach basketball and I play basketball, so there's lots of things I'm into that some of you are going to be into. Um, the reason I'm here, though, is not to talk to you about Star Wars, as awesome as that would be. Uh, I'm here to talk to you guys about my relationship with Huntington's disease. Uh, when I was when I was a couple years younger, 22, I had a test done um, because I knew there was a chance I might have Huntington's, and I got my results back, and they came back positive. I do have Huntington's disease. Um, my repeat count is 47, so in the DNA, there's a certain number of repeats, and the normal person has 122. I have 47, um, which means for me that that dictates when you have onset and how bad it will be. Um, my father, he has a count of 44, and he started to show the disease when he was 46 or 47, right around that time frame. So that means my count's higher than his, so I'm going to show before he does. Um, and he started, like I said, at 46, 47. So my range of me having onset is 35 to 50. So that means at best I have 25 years to go. At worst I have less than 10. Um, what that means for me is ultimately at some point I will not be able to do the things I love. There's going to be a day where I'm not going to be able to dribble basketball anymore. There's going to be a time where I forget who my kids are for the first time and every time after that. Um, there'll be days where I won't be able to move. Um, it'll eventually get to the point where I won't be able to eat by myself. I won't be able to say anyone's names. I, I won't be able to do a whole lot of things. Um, along with that, eventually, I will be trapped in my body because the mind doesn't go as quickly as the body does. Sure, you forget things, but personality-wise and, and in intellect-wise, you're still there. It's just late. Um, and eventually, once it gets to the point where it's really bad, about 10 years after the physical stuff starts, the brain drives itself crazy. Um, the thing about Huntington's, though, is that Huntington's doesn't kill people. Accidents from Huntington's kill people. People fall, people get flipped over in a bathtub and drown. Uh, my grandfather, he ended up bleeding to death from an IV. Uh, he had an IV in his arm, and he was shaking too much, and he ruptured the veins in his arm, and he bled to death in his room. Uh, so that's what kills people with Huntington's. It's the, it's the accidents that happen from it with the movements. Um, it, it affects more than just me. It affects my family. It's going to affect my wife. Um, I married my wife about four months ago. Uh, we're still, you know, newlyweds and all that, but going into this, the reason I got tested was because I wanted to get engaged to her. I wanted to ask her to be my wife. And so she knew all this going in, and, you know, with us getting married, she's agreed that at some point she's going to take care of me. And at some point, she will be alone. Um, the, the back part of her life, you know, 20, 30 years after I'm gone, you know, barring some horrible accident, um, she's guaranteed to be alone. And that's the deal we've made. Um, so it'll affect her. Also, it affects us in terms of children. We, we both want kids. We're both, now I'm a teacher. She's a sh social worker, so we both love kids. Um, it's gonna affect our choices because every year we put off having kids, that's a year less that my kids are gonna know me. Um, and it's not just them knowing me, but it's also do we even have kids because there's a 50% chance that they might have Huntington's. Um, there is an option of in vitro, but not everyone has $19,000 to spare on it. And unfortunately, the uh, health insurance companies don't really wanna pay for that. Um, so that's, that's where that lies now. So those are the kind of tough choices that people with Huntington's need to make on a daily basis. Um, it also affects my dad. My, my dad has Huntington's, as I've said. Um, there's no way he's gonna know his grandkids, even if we you know, had kids tomorrow. 
uh, by the time they're old enough to remember things, he won't be who he is now. So they're, they're, they're not, never going to know their grandfather. Um, and even my kids, every like I said, every year we put it off, it's going to be bad. There's going to get to be a point where my kids are going to be scared of me. They will not want to spend time with me. They won't bring their friends around. I will be an embarrassment. I will scare children. Uh, that That's what is in store for me. That is the way that society typically reacts to someone who is that different, um, through no fault of my own. And I, that, that's coming. I expect that. Um, and with saying all this, it's it's pretty bad right now. I mean, this is Debbie Downer right now. This is the lowest of the lows. This is this is bad. And before I continue, let me just you know say I understand there are other illnesses out there. There are things that are far worse, that are far more painful, that affect people at much younger ages. And I do not discount those at all. However, this is an illness that is personally affecting me, and it's something that I have a chance through me having to live with it to make a difference. Um, it's all about perspective. You know, I got my test results, I know what my future is, um, and the way I view it is knowledge is power. I'm not gonna have a pity party. I don't want, you know, I don't want people to feel bad for me. I want people to, you know, take this as an opportunity to educate themselves and make choices. I know what's coming, so I'm not gonna waste my time. If I have the opportunity to do something, I'm gonna go do it. You know, oh, do you want to do this? No, it's okay, I'll wait for later. I'm not going to say that. I don't have later. I'm going to do it now. And so, you know, it's not a sad, it is a sad thing, but there's good in it and you need to find it. Um, and while talking about that, you know, it's all about viewpoint and what you do with it. There, there, there isn't much hope for someone like me. There's no hope for someone like my dad. The only kind of medicines we have for us right now are... You know, you can take muscle relaxants for the spasms, but you turn into a puddle that sits on a couch all day. You can take antidepressants, but it dulls your mind. There's things you can do to help the side effects, but there is no cure. And so for me and my father, there's little hope, mostly none. Um, however, there is hope, in not for myself, but for my kids and people of my kid, future kids generations there's hope for them you know there's research being done there's universities looking into it however the 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 funds are limited there's only so much they can do and so we need to do what we can with the knowledge we have you know we 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 know that this is an issue we know this is something that we can take steps to help I mean, you saw how huge the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge was. If we had something like that for Huntington's, it would be huge. And, you know, granted the Ice Bucket Challenge stuff will help Huntington's because ALS and Huntington's are related, but it's things like that that need to happen. We need something. We need some, some more hope to help. Because, um, like I said, for us, for people my age and older, there is not a lot of hope. But for my kids, that's where the hope lies, and that's why I'm doing all this. It's because I know that there's hope for the future. If I can, you know, if my generation is the last one that has to deal with this, that is the ultimate goal. And so the big thing is is a hope for a cure, and, and that's the hope for the future. And that's choices that, you know, people like you guys have to make. I've made my choice. I'm active, but you have to decide how you take that information and use it.